It's a given in politics that if you're in power long enough, you're gonna leave a legacy. In America, everyone's obsessed over the Trump legacy, stacking the Supreme Court with Republican-aligned justices to block any Democrat initiative. And now Democrats are worried that if Trump gets in again, he's gonna stack the key positions in certifying elections so he can become El Presidente for life. It's all Bill Maher ever talks about every week is just Trump's coming back, this time he won't leave, and the Gen Z liberals need to ask themselves, if I'm swiping right on Bill Maher, a handsome multi-millionaire playboy because of his mature age, maybe he's not too mature. Maybe I'm just immature. But honestly, it's so melodramatic and boring. A guy tries to become the most powerful man on earth and stay in that position forever. I've heard that story before. We all have. We've all read the libtard's most favorite analogy for everything, Harry Potter. We all know how it ends. Voldemort goes down for breaking Ministry of Magic rules regarding a hush money payment he made to Stormy Daniels, some sort of sex witch. Today, I want to tread a path less traveled and examine the legacy of someone with an ego the size of Trump yet with the charisma of Ron DeSantis. And that man is Ron DeSantis. Fuck, he sucks. No, I'm not doing a tight five on Ron, but I will do a different bumbling Italian state politician nicknamed Meatball. John Barillaro. What was his legacy? All right, I was lying when I said the path less travel. This is a pretty well-trod path for me. But I just wanted to point out, Meatball Ron, Trump learned from the best. Except I should have learned from Trump about how to couch my insults and then maybe I wouldn't have been sued for it. I'm never gonna call John Barillaro Meatball John. But everyone wants me to and some people are saying he looks like a meatball. But I'm not gonna call John Barillaro Meatball John. I just won't do it. I'm too nice, folks. Steel sharp and steel. Lesson for next time, I suppose. All lessons for today, in fact. Just when I thought I was up, they pulled me back again. Some people are saying it's strange that John Barillaro is a 50-year-old retired National Party politician always being spotted at raves. I'm not going to say it, but some people are saying it, and it's actually kind of pathetic. Have you heard these rumors, folks? Some people say he loves to lick. Live show in Melbourne this Wednesday. Get your tickets at friendlyjordis.com. Jesus Christ, our Deputy Premier left office like he was a leave leaving high school at year 10. Fuck yeah, mad apprenticeship at my mad construction company and Ministry of Sound Raves, boys! Murray, what about your court appearance? Fuck off, it was self-defense, it was in my face! And when he was in, he governed like he was in year 10. Remember the Kosciuszko Wild Horse Heritage Act? This was a bill brought in and championed by John Barillaro that protected the feral horses that are absolutely wrecking the fragile alpine ecosystems of Australia. You can watch my videos here on it that... Don't watch the first one, that was when I didn't know how to pronounce John Barillaro's name correctly. John Barlialo. That would explain why John Barlialo. John Barlialo. I maintained that I was trying to do a Mario-based pun and the world wasn't ready. Just a quick summary of the feral horse issue though. There are feral horses in Kosciuszko National Park and their hard hooves ruin the very delicate ecosystems that endemic species require to survive. Here are some examples of what the horses do. 12 animals are at risk of going extinct because of these horses. Sounds pretty bad, right? Sounds like the logical thing you would do is what we do with any feral animal and you would kill them. But I want you to consider the other perspective. Think of the most unstable borderline person you know now put yourself in their shoes. Chances are they're really into horses. Now imagine you are a complete psycho horse person and you hear that the government has to decide between saving 12 unique species from extinction or a few thousand horsies. Yeah, a real trolley dilemma. Not really. Remember, we're in the head of a horse person. Of course you'd choose the horse. Horses are magnets for crazy people. So Australia's horse people got together opposing New South Wales's efforts to cull a generic feral animal responsible for massive environmental destruction. And they found their champion in John Barillaro, who in 2018, after getting donations from a guy that does horse tours in snowy mountains, passed the Kosciuszko Wild Horse Heritage Act, a law that made feral horses a protected species. You know, because of their cultural value. By the way, the same donor, Peter Cochran, boasted that the legislation was drafted by a pro bono solicitor under instruction by him. Sweet. 
Free money, and I didn't even have to write the bill. Win-win, Stooge. In other news, Eric Adams, the New York City Mayor, has introduced the Subway Wild Rodent Heritage Act. That is an act that finally recognises and protects the significant cultural value of rats to New York City. Republican critics are saying that it is a way for Adams to duck responsibility for New York City's ongoing sanitation crisis, to which Adams concedes is true, stating, at least I'm not a fucking idiot protecting feral creatures sincerely. Then again, that probably is a better idea as what is more iconic? This is serious. Snow Mountains Brumpies or New York Subway Rats? Vote in the comments. But anyway, back to John's legacy. It is his legacy. When John resigned, he claimed that one of the most important achievements was saving the iconic Snowy Mountains Brumby. John, it's a feral horse, an introduced pest. Sorry to keep extending the same type of metaphor, but I need to hammer it into everyone's head. If I bring a skunk to the Snowy Mountains, it doesn't become the iconic Snowy Mountains stinker. It's a skunk. Albeit it would resemble some humorous scenes from Looney Tunes. So maybe it would have some solid cultural values, unlike the horses. So five years on from this bill, and this is John's legacy. The ecosystems in the Snowy Mountains are at breaking point. Look at these pictures from Anthony Sharwood, a man who's written a book on the Brumpy Wars, a colloquial term for the hillbillies campaign against the experts that want to cull the horses. These are just 30 kilometers apart. One's in the ACT, where they have zero tolerance for feral horses. And this is the one in New South Wales. So if we go back five years to my first video that you shouldn't watch, just go down to the comments there and up, oh, second from the top, my favorite on earth, both parties are just the same. Just a fresh reminder, Labor controlled precinct, Liberal controlled precinct. The good news is Labor are in power federally and on a state level. So the issue will probably be solved. After public consultation, the New South Wales government has just authorized aerial shooting of the horses. By the way, the majority of submissions were for the shooting. Despite the shrill screams from horse people and so-called animal rights activists who seem to only care about the suffering of horses, but not mountain pygmy possums, the corroboree frog, the broad toothed rat, the gefiga skink and more. I am sorry that that sounds like this scene from Futurama exactly. There's precious life right here in this this scum puddle. Ah, oh, the desert muck leech. Amazingly, the entire species lives in this one tiny stink hole. Killing these will be so much easier than exterminating those ponies. God damn that, like, how eerie is that? Anyway, wouldn't you rather be shot from a helicopter than trod on by a giant horse? People hate being trod on so much, we put it on flags. So it's good news that shooting from helicopters is gonna start up again. Might be the only time you ever hear me under that sentence. Maybe if I do a follow-up on this video, but it's worth it to save these ecosystems and so we can say goodbye to John's legacy. And might I just say, what a stupid legacy. The only way he could have made his mark on history is if in the few short years his bill was enacted, it resulted in the extinction of some of these species. Other than that, his heritage law was always destined to fail in the long term. You extend the life of a few horses for five years in exchange for a 10k donation and potential extinctions. I really cannot stress how stupid these people are. Adding the stupidity to this, a federal Senate inquiry recently published a report examining the impact of feral horses on alpine ecosystems, along with finding the usual that the horses are going to completely destroy Cozzy. The committee found constitutional issues with the law as well. Ooh. Apparently it's inconsistent with federal legislation, chiefly the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act of 1999, which rightfully categorizes feral horses, who'd have guessed, as pests that are threatening native species. A legally and scientifically stupid law. Two for one. What an amazing legacy, John. You got ripped off, though. Peter Cochran might have given you 10k. He did fuck up his homework that he said he'd do for you, though, didn't he? There's also just a whole section of the report of experts just trashing the act. If you have any doubts that it needs to go, Listen to this. The Australian Veterinary Association, or AVA, told the committee that the New South Wales Wild Horse Heritage Act provides a disproportionate weight to feral horses over obligations to protect native habitats, fauna, and flora within the park. I think vets are gonna know and care a little more about what's best for animals than the people that make these images epic as they are. Actually, I'm being unfair. They obviously care about them a lot. They hold vigils for them. What would Professor Don Driscoll, Professor Michael Archer, and conservation expert Ian Pulsford know in comparison to them? Professor Don Driscoll from Deakin University stated that the biggest barrier to implementing a coordinated approach to feral horse management in the Alps is the New South Wales Wild Horse Heritage Act. Professor Michael Archer from the Australian Academy of Science concurred and stated that the act stands out like a sore thumb. 
Mr Ian Pulsford, a Connectivity Conservation and Protected Area Specialist, submitted that apart from climate change in New South Wales, the Wild Horse Heritage Act is the single greatest current threat to the national heritage values of Kosciuszko National Park. Further, Mr Pulsford highlighted the contrast between New South Wales and Commonwealth legislation. I mean, I do feel a bit strange even mentioning these guys' names, as the Senate report also details the threats New South Wales National Parks and wildlife staff have received from horsey people. They're reportedly stalked, harassed and threatened, and it's not just limited to them, sometimes their children even get ostracised. There are also threats to firebomb the Jindabyne Visitor Centre and National Parks and Wildlife Services office. So I guess this video is just a message to the politicians and bureaucrats going through with what needs to be done. Dismantling Bruzz's legacy in order to save an ecosystem. Good work. The majority support you. Don't listen to the haters. Australia should not become a country governed by a minority of antisocial delusional special interest groups. And if the nutbag horse people do firebomb you, don't worry. Take it from me. It's not that bad. No, actually it is pretty shit. <laughs>